Eagle Eye News takes a closer look at the spread of Ebola. Also, Jackson fights back with the annual sickle cell walk. Welcome to Eagle Eye News. I'm Jonathan Taylor. Melanie and Kelly are out. With the rise of technology, computers are becoming more and more prevalent in our society, which is taking an a toll on older faculty and students. I had the privilege to go on the field and find out more about this story. It seems like the patients at Tougaloo College are struggling with technology, especially the faculty. Jim Brown, a history professor, tells us how he was introduced to computers. During the 1980s, I became aware that there were these things out there called computers. And Tougaloo began inviting us, but it was very optional, to attend seminars at places. I remember one of them was at Xavier University in New Orleans and it had something to do with COBOL language, early computer languages. And I was very slow because I'd been here all these years and I teach history which deals with the past. I was very slow to pick up on how important computers were becoming. He also mentions that he was helped by other faculty to learn the basics of handling a computer. To Sharon Streeter, to, with, to whom I'm an eternally grateful, that she kind of jump-started me. You'd have to ask her when this was, late 80s probably. She taught a beginner's course in computer technology that got me started. Finally, Brown gives us his ideas what Tougaloo could do to better equip faculty to manage current technology. Particularly for students, they need more access to computers. Uh, we need resources that would provide for more computers. You know, you go to somewhere like Mississippi State or USM or Texas State, um, and these universities have computers everywhere. The library is full of computers. and. Our students fight over access to computers. There's just not enough access for students, particularly. This is Jonathan Taylor, Channel 19, Eagle Eye News. Tougaloo students welcome the next wave of freshmen with its annual high school day. Kiara Bronson has the story. Students from different Mississippi schools filled up the Krogan Gymnasium today as it was high school day at Tougaloo College. Different organizations on campus display boards for high school kids to show them more about their organization. One student talked about the economics department. Economic degree, you can obtain a master's in public administration, business administration, or you can have a master's in economics. One student said he is enjoying the atmosphere of the campus. It's going good so far. It's, it's, it's turned up, got good spirit. My school won Spirit Award, we just having fun all around. Faculty and administration talk to the students about Tougaloo College. 20% of all the doctors that practice in Mississippi are Tougaloo graduates. Five students from one school have already been accepted to the college. They went online, they got an application, they filled it out, they turned in their ACT scores and their GPAs already before today. School students ended their day with entertainment from the Tougaloo College cheerleaders, sororities, and fraternities. I am Kiera Brunson reporting for China 19 Eagle Eye News. When we come back, find out about the nightmare on the Emily Street. I'm not going in that spinal. Let me just consider it. No, I'm not going to Tougaloo. Hey, what's going on? You might have just called me over here. It's nothing. It's just, I don't want to go to Tougaloo. Well, what's your reason? I don't want to go to a small college. And plus, I heard it's boring. <laughs> so basically, you don't know anything about Tougaloo. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Although Tougaloo is a small school, it's family oriented. Everyone knows everyone. The classes are smaller, which means it's easier to get to know your teachers. The graduation rate is good. The athletic department, exceptional. Plus, I heard the college doc is good too. Well, I mean, I guess I just need a little bit more time to think. Well, if it's any motivation to you, I'm going. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
Yeah. Guess what, Ma? What? I'm going to Tougaloo. Yes! So proud of you. Welcome back to Eagle Eye News. Lions, Tigers, and Scares, oh my. Find out about the Nightmare on Elm Street event at Tougaloo. Kiara Bronson has a story. It was a spooky night on Tougaloo campus as the students had a chance to watch Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. <laughs> Actor Ken Sagos came to talk about how he was the first African American to survive a horror film when he was in Part 3 of the series. It's never been done before. With the exception of the 1970s, there was a movie called Black Widow. Sagos was invited by a student who was inspired by him. I got in contact with Mr. Ken Sagos when I was back home in Los Angeles, and I did a show for him, a musical review, and I played three characters. The night was filled with entertainment with a monologue and singing. I refuse to allow my children to witness the voice or make mature decisions in court. Sago did a Q&A session with the audience after they watched the movie. How was it back then uh, as a black actor? Oh, me too. Say things that a black guy would say. It was Sago's first time doing a tour at a historically black college and he hopes other celebrities come soon. I think you all deserve for us to come and talk to you, especially those uh, who are benefiting from young people. I am Kiara Bronson, reporting for China 19 Eagle Eye News. When we come back, we cover the current status of Ebola and also see how the volleyball team is doing this season. Also, be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tougaloo Eagle Eye News. We'll be right back. Hey, Jim. Hey, Bob. Crazy weather we're having. Yeah. Hey, uh, when's the next test? Let's coordinate. Um, how's Thursday? Thursday's perfect. You know what? I'm going to give them a test too, and I'll make it worth 20% of their overall grade. Nah, I'll make it 30. You think 30 is better? Yeah, you got to make it just for these kids. Give them a taste of what it's like in the real world. It's hard out there for a pimp. Yeah, for sure. Where's the mothership? You know what? On Friday, I'll give them a take-home test, and none of the answers will be in textbook. That totally ruined their weekend. Jim? Yeah? You're a genius. <laughs> 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 Ebola has been shaking the world as it claims more victims each and every day. But how is it spread? What's the status of the disease? Noah Hale has the story. Amongst the students of Tougaloo College, many have heard about the Ebola virus. But does anyone know what it really is or where it came from? One student gives their thoughts. He's named the Ebola River near there. That's why they call it Ebola. The Ebola virus a disease that recently originated in the Democratic Republic of Congo, also known as Ebola hemographic fever, or simply Ebola, is a disease of humans and other animals caused by the Ebola virus. A disease that's rampant, well, it's not even rampant, it's just a disease that, it's, it's a very incurable disease, you know, originating from West Africa. We have a couple of cases in the U.S., you know, other countries have some, you know, they have some reported cases also. So Ebola to me is a disease. With flu season here, many theories amongst the students of Tougaloo College have written about the Ebola virus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of, there's just a lot of fear mongering. Um, people aren't, you know, well educated about the disease, so they really do not know what's going on. Um, people do not do any reading. Basically, people, you know, use, you know, a unreliable source of media to keep track of the disease, you know, they probably use Instagram. This new virus is acquired by contacting with blood or any other bodily fluids of an infected human or other animal. You get Ebola from certain things. You get Ebola from body fluids, from a person who is sick with or has died from Ebola. You can get Ebola from objects that are contaminated with the virus, and you can get Ebola from infected animals. Over time, hopefully many of the students at Tougaloo College will prepare and understand the severity of the Ebola virus. This is Noah Hale, signing out. Channel 19 News, Eagle Eye. Jackson fights sickle cell anemia one step at a time with its annual cell walk. Kiara Bronson has the story. <laughs> People from Jackson and surrounding areas gathered at Jackson State today to walk for sickle cell. 
This is the ninth year this event has been going on as a part of Mississippi Greek Weekend. Uh, 5K is about raising awareness around uh, sickle cell anemia and disease, and then also raising money for uh, finding a cure. One group from Jackson called the Lady Warriors came to this event to support Derek James or DJ who has sickle cell. It was diagnosed shortly after birth. We've been doing this since 2007 just to show awareness. Jackson Mayor Tony Yarber was named ambassador for Cure Sickle Cell Foundation before the walk up began. This is a disease that will have a cure. This is a disease that will uh, that will no longer affect our children the way that it has been. Chief of Police Lee Vance also came to support this sickle cell event. To get these many people out for an event on a football Sunday afternoon, which tells me that Jacksonians and Jackson State University have their priorities right. The 5K walk started and ended at the Walton Payton Center. Pierre Brunson reporting for Channel 19 News. Finally, we look at the Tougaloo girls' volleyball status. Noah Hill has the story. With the start of the new volleyball season, the Lady Bulldogs are off to a moderate start. With a current 1-6 record, upperclassman Jana Williams explains the chemistry of the newly formed team. It, it has its pros and its cons. I would say a pro would be that it's a new team. We have something new to build off of. And then um, we can all just bond together. But as far as it being a, a problem, it's just everybody could be the best from their team and they have to compensate with coming from being the best. So, you know, we all have to blend in together to be one team. With there being a new team, Leadership lies in the hands of only two upperclassmen. It's kind of pressurable sometimes, but it's not hard because I've, I've been here. So I feel like me being experienced, it's not hard on me. It's easy to me, for me to go out there and do my job and encourage other people to come and do what I do or do better than me. With their slow start, the Lady Bulldogs motivate themselves and keep their spirits up with cheerful slogans. And all, all I say is one heart, one team, one mission. This is Noah Hale. Channel 19, Eagle Eye News. Well, that's all that we have for today. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Tougaloo Eagle Eye News. Have a good day.